Ladies and gentlemen, welcome podcast. back to another episode of the What Are We Doing podcast. My name is Levi McCurdy, and this is episode 145. And listen, babes, I'm hopped up. I'm hopped up. I'm hopped up on nothing but pure energy drinks and 150 milligrams of Vyvanse, baby. Listen, they updated the fiance's dosage, so now daddy gets the leftovers, okay? It's episode 145, baby. Everybody, it's here, okay? And we're cruising and bruising on our way to 150, on our way to 200. Um, And we've come to a realization. We've come to a pretty solid realization here at the Wad Pod Studios that we are in fact, and I mean, you know, whatever, people could dispute this fact, but so far we have not seen any circumstantial evidence that would lead us to believe we're wrong here when it comes to the fact that we are the number one podcast in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. I mean, round of applause. We're number one uh, on all the charts, basically. There is, uh, there's not another podcast that is outdoing our numbers, the episodes, the quality, the everything. We're the number one podcast in Mechanicsburg, PA. And so, you know, it's, um, it's been a long time coming, you know. Uh, dare I say... You know, we might have had that title since like episode three, but here we are. It's fine. And I think it's something to realize that this is why, listen, this is why we want Shane Gillis on the podcast. This is why Shane Gillis needs to be a guest on the What Are We Doing podcast. We need to get him here, get him in studio, in front of our microphones, and have a conversation. Okay. Everyone knows Shane Gillis. Okay, uh, Saturday Night Live, stand-up comedian, back to Saturday Night Live, Joe Rogan's friend, you know what I mean? Shane Gillis, uh, one of the funniest men, Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania native, okay? Uh, If you follow his story, you'll know uh, he grew up here, I think, here in Mechanicsburg, moved to Philly, Pittsburgh a little bit, uh, somewhere in those areas, I think Philly, And then, uh, you know, obviously New York, and now I think he resides in Texas. Shane Gillis, uh, Mechanicsburg, PA native. His show, Tires. His show, Tires, is on Netflix. Hilarious. Uh, Hands down, amazing. Incredible piece of work. Probably uh, why we've got the news. We've got breaking news right here just now, just announced as I sat down. Tires, Netflix, season two. Announced, approved, happening. Congratulations. Congratulations to Shane Gillis, all of his friends, uh, Matt, all the people who worked on the show um, in season one that made it uh, that made it an incredible piece of work. An incredible piece of work in a um, you know, in a time where in a time where comedians and their movies and their TV shows are kind of, eh, haven't really been uh, performing the way that they probably thought they would when it came to their audience and relationships to the podcast and transitioning that uh, attention and focus over to like TV and the movie theaters. And, you know, um, it hasn't been working. You know, like we've got, like, I'm pretty sure, uh, the machine Chrysler's movie flopped. Like I never watched, I don't think anyone's seen it. Uh, um, uh, Sebastian's movie, whatever Sebastian's new TV shows, whatever. I think Bill Burr did the movie thing that flopped. So it's like in a world of comedians attempting to go mainstream, uh, and you know, get these sitcoms, these shows, these, uh, sketch comedies, these movies, Uh, tires is obviously winning. So congrats to Gillis. Uh, and you know what I mean? Here's the thing. We need him. We need Shane on the podcast for a few reasons, but the main reason being, uh, is I need to convince him that tires season two, because obviously it was just announced they they haven't started filming yet. We need to convince Shane Gillis to film tire season two, back here in Mechanicsburg, and I can't think of a better location than at the best G's tires, okay? Listen, if you don't know, if you're not from Mechanicsburg, because if you're not like the the 30 of us who live here, 
there is one of the best new places to go for oil changes, new tires on your car basically is, you know, the bread and butter from the name. Uh, the, the, <laughs> I swear to God, this is real. This is a real business. It's called, it's literally called <laughs> the best G. Okay. We need Shane Gillis on the podcast so we can a introduce him to the best G because I'm sure this is a new business here in Mechanicsburg, just a few years old. Shane probably hasn't been back this way. You know, since then, he probably doesn't even know this place exists since now his time in New York and Texas and L.A. and all that shit. So we need Shane to not only come on the podcast, but we need to convince him that uh, the filming location for Tire Season 2 should not be at his friend's dad's garage in uh, Westchester, PA. They should come here to Mechanicsburg, hometown. Listen, all they need, all they need, listen, write best G a check for like 20 grand. And I guarantee you he'll piss off for however long you need to film season two. Okay. Like, isn't that, isn't that what we should do? Like, can you think of a more better idea? Like that's it right now. I'm pretty sure the best G shop is like way smaller than the one that they filmed in season one, but that could be the premise. Season two of tires. The premise is the shop's not doing so great. They had to move out because they couldn't afford their current rent. And then now they had to like downsize to a smaller garage because, you know, inflation, the economy, and that makes it even funnier, right? All these dudes trying to do this oil change and like change tires when there's only like one or two bays to work out of. That is hilarious. Okay. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, and like, you know, we could like even appoint to like, you know, uh, uh, you know, everyone's buying Teslas, right? So everyone's out here buying Teslas, electric vehicles are going mainstream. People don't need oil changes anymore. So like now 90% of your business, they still need tires, but let's be honest, I'm pretty sure Tesla, by the time you need new tires on your Teslas, it's time to trade in the lease anyways. So like, the businesses of auto mechanics are going to start dwindling here very, very soon. The small guys will fade out quickly. And then the bigger guys like the Jiffy Lubes and like the big, you know, the car dealerships with their own shops or whatever, those will stay for a while. But eventually, like, what else are we going to need other than a row of electric chargers? There's not much other maintenance. Obviously, we'll need a few people for when the maintenance is necessary. But nine times out of ten... When it comes to these electric vehicles, the only maintenance you need is an over-the-air software update. So a few button clicks uh, and you're taken care of. So, you know, it would be the perfect premise. It would be the perfect premise for Shane Gillis's uh, Tires Season 2, okay? You know, so all of that to say, we need Shane on the podcast. I think it would be a fantastic addition to our repertoire of guests, the very few limited that we've had here because no one really likes me. It's fine. But listen, I think to sweeten the deal, here's what we have to offer. So if management, if you're still listening, Shane's manager, I know she's a lovely lady. Listen, we can provide him with as many grilled cheeses, okay, as we need to. And by God, if we will not have any less than 15 cases of Bud Light, we've already got a stack over here. We've already got a stack of Bud Light ready to go. When Shane arrives in this studio, he will have everything his heart's ever desired. Did what? Fuck it. Did your mom's house provide Shane with beer and grilled cheese? No. I mean, they got him Zen. That's fine. We'll get him a tower of Zen. We'll get Shane a new Xbox controller a stack of grilled cheeses, a stack of Bud Light, uh, a stack of Zin, and what? Uh, hello? Listen, let's make it happen. Our schedule's open. Whenever Shane's back in PA, we need him in the studio, okay? Um, but, you know, in all seriousness, if you live, uh, and just to, to wrap up the Shane Gills bit, if you do live in the central PA area, specifically like Mechanicsburg, Camp Hill, around the Carlisle Pike, uh, not only should you be going to uh, Top G's, Best G's, Tire Services, and Auto Garage for your car repair, but you need to ditch the Duncan 
and get the fuck out of the Starbucks line um, uh, and uh, and go to Noir Coffee, okay? It's at the end of the pike. It's local. You're supporting small business. And more importantly, Noir Coffee is a 1,000% better than Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts. And B, it's going to a good cause because at Noir they only hire uh, the special needs. Those with Down syndrome uh, are running the entire thing. And so it's a cause. Uh, it's a small business. It's a great level of support. Listen, Megs and I go whenever we can. We love it there. Megs goes all the time. Uh, the drinks are great. Um, and so, like I said, if you're uh, if you're down to clown and you just want to support from a distance, uh, instead of getting Dunkin' Donuts coffee, uh, next time stop at new war. It's on the Carlisle Pike. And, uh, you know, uh, I think I'm pretty sure it's own Shane's sister, I think runs it. He helped opened it. He was there at the grand opening. It's a whole family affair. Um, and that's why we just, we love it. We love him. We love the Gillis family. We love everything they're doing. Um, and it's, and it's crazy. And so congrats to him on all the success. We can't wait. We can't wait. We cannot wait to have you on the podcast whenever you inevitably say yes. We're done. We're done. America's canceled. Thank you. We're done. We've officially canceled America, or at least the birth or the independence of the country. It's game over. We've got no lives left. It's the end. It's the end for the United States. And of course, listen, I'm not talking about the inevitable World War III. I'm not talking about the nuclear submarines that are sitting right off our coast that Russia sent over this week. I'm not talking about the 10-year financial agreement that President Biden just signed with the Ukraine and Zelensky to continue funding that for the next decade. I'm not talking about the countless prices that are through the roof at the grocery store and at the gas pump. I'm not talking about any of those things. America is canceled for the mere fact that Nathan's Hot Dogs has banned Joey Chestnut from the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Competition this 4th of July. what? Hey, if we are literally have nothing left to hold on to, we as Americans have essentially had most of our freedom stripped away, most of us can't get a job, and those of us who do have jobs can't afford to live, we can't afford health care, we can't afford the bills, we can't do anything that the American dream was set up for us to do because it now costs $3 million. And the last thing, the last thing that we were holding on to with a bit of hope, with a bit of sunshine, with a little bit, maybe a rain delay again this year, we weren't going to stop Joey Chestnut from competing once again and obviously dominating once again in the Nathan's 4th of July hot dog contest. But it's America, and they've stripped it away. Now listen, does Nathan's have you know, some form of rhyme or reason as to of why they did this? Yes. Now, did Joey Chestnut just sign a $1.4 million deal with the company brand Impossible Meat? Yes. Okay. We're, you know, going a little woke here in 2024. We're going impossible. We're trying to, you know, get our health on the right path. Joey's getting older. He can't down all beef processed jam, whatever fucking part of the pig cow slop mess into those hot dogs. You can 100% beef. Get the fuck out, Nathan's. Maybe he's changes. Maybe he wants to be healthy. Maybe his wife said, Hey, Joey, it's time, sweetheart. You're not going to live forever. Why don't we go like all natural? Why don't we go vegan? Why don't we go veg? Why don't we talk to our friends at Impossible Meat? And so naturally, a million dollars later, we signed the deal. And as you can tell, Nathan's wasn't too happy. Now, I don't think, obviously, because this contract was signed, he didn't have a deal prior with Nathan's, or maybe he did. I'm not sure we didn't do the research on that part, but uh, they didn't end up uh, appreciating it. And I mean, the internet, the internet lost their mind. 
Uh, and obviously, 4th of July is canceled, like I said. Now, when these types of things happen, okay, uh, there's always a savior that hopefully comes to our rescue. And since it's not looking so good for the whole Mike Tyson versus uh, Logan Paul situation, you know, primarily because Mike Tyson's an 80-year-old fucking man and shouldn't be boxing uh, a 23-year-old Jake Paul or however old he is. Like, you know, like, just shut up. Stop it. Knock it off. Go fight someone. The dude you just got with Ruby Rose, just go fight him. Fight him and just do what you do, man. Like, you don't, Tyson, like, knock it off. So Netflix, they're kind of reaching... And so among this news, now I don't know the proper order of events here. It may or may not fall in line with how I assumed it happened. But as soon as Netflix got wind, as soon as Netflix got news of this monstrosity that Nathan's is holding over our heads, like what do they expect? What do they expect to happen? All of America is going to tune in to the Nathan's hot dog eating contest to see what? someone down 13 hot dogs in, 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 in 10 in five minutes or whatever the thing is like, no, we watch because we know everyone else is going to do 10 to 20 dogs. And in the same amount of time, Joey's going to down 30 to 40. Like it's that big of a difference. It's that big of a deal. And now that it's not happening, why would we entertain it? So Netflix came along and they said, Hey bros, Here's the bag. Here's the bag. Sign on the line. What do we think? We're thinking Joey Chestnut versus Kobayashi, a rivalry that has not happened since, I believe, 2009. Let's look that up right now. It's a dog-eat-dog world out there, and on September 2nd, it will be a man-eat-hot-dog world, too. Ah! Netflix with the humor. Streaming live on Netflix, 16-time hot dog eating champion Joey Chestnut will face off against rival and six-time hot dog eating champion Takuru Kobayashi, okay? Um, and Chestnut versus Kobayashi, unfinished beef with all beef hot dogs. The showdown will settle a 15-year rivalry between the two competitive eaters. Will Chestnut uh, maintain his uh, title as the world's greatest, or will Kobayashi come with vengeance? Okay. Um, and just so everyone knows, uh, Chestnut, my numbers were way off prior a few minutes ago. Chestnut's record at the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Competition is 76 hot dogs in 10 minutes. Hey, shut up. Bring him back. Get yeah, it's I'm done. Listen. <sighs> He's also won iconic Nathan's famous uh Fourth of July International Hot Dog Eating Contest 16 times, including every year since 2016. But on June 11th, Major League Eating announced that Chestnut will be left out of the 2024 competition, citing issues due to Chestnut's recent deal with impossible food. Through all my years in competitive eating, Kobayashi stands as my fiercest rival, said Chestnut. Competing against him pushed me to be so much better. And I know that fans have been waiting a long time, yes we have, for another chapter of our rivalry. And I can't wait for our massive showdown live on Netflix. It's time to give the people what they want. A uh, little history on the beef, like I said, for years, the rivalry between Chestnut and Kobayashi dominated headlines at famous 4th of July International Hot Dog Eating Contest, but the two competitive eating legends have not faced off since 2009. Uh, that was the year that Chestnut finally uh, beat Kobayashi in a five-hot dog sudden-death eat-off. The live event on September 2nd will be the first time that they have uh, been coming face-to-face -face in 15 years. The location and timing will be announced at a later date. So Netflix topped on. Good job. Well done. Well done on a viral moment because you know what we're watching this year? And you know what we're not watching this year? Kobayashi versus Chestnut. Unfinished beef. And not the 4th of July event. It's, it's, it's one of those things where... 
you seize an opportunity. And that's exactly what Netflix did. And it's uh, Joey Chestnut. Canceling Joey Chestnut. And hey, by the way, the Netflix event, I don't know if you heard when I read it, all beef, all beef hot dogs. So obviously impossible meat is still okay. It's still okay with Joey eating all beef. So like, hey, Nathan's, get the hot dog out your ass and let him back in. Let the man compete. And so if they don't, 4th of July will remain canceled and we will then have to determine whether or not as Americans to vote or push or riot or protest or whatever we need to do, whatever the people are doing around the White House with the ribbon and the fucking stopping the pride parades for Palestine, we need to put all the energy. Let's put all that energy, okay? Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to work. We're not, the whole Palestine thing, you're not going to make a difference. So let's put all that energy into the 4th of July event. Protest Nathan's, put a ribbon around their factory, do something, throw hot dogs at the president until Joey Chestnut gets back in. Because if there's one thing that we have learned in this country over the years is that the American people don't really have a say when it comes to foreign policy, war, what the president does, whatever, like, you know, they can promise and do whatever they want, but they, at the end of the day, there's an agenda that they have to follow. And so when it comes to like protests and people standing outside the White House, like, what are you doing? Make a change. Like, let's be honest, historically, maybe only worked a few times, okay? Like BLM, George Floyd, that kind of had an impact on society. But like before that, the protesting doesn't, really make a difference. Israel is still going to send the rockets. You're still going to see the beheadings on TikTok. It's not going to stop until, you know, whatever, the verdict's reached, but your protest isn't doing it. So if we take all that energy, take it all, take all that energy, the signs, cross out the Palestine shit, and just put free chestnut and start rioting at every single Nathan's hot dog factory, that is how we make a difference in this country. Because if enough people stand up, if enough people protest, we'll move their stock price, their sales will be affected, and they'll be forced to make a move, okay? So like, if we can, let's take all the energy we're putting into like nonsense and this and that and worrying about our rights as Americans and like, you know, don't, don't worry about any of that. You know what I mean? Let Biden handle all that. Cause he's in trust. Biden's trust me. He's sharp between the eyes. He knows what he's doing. Let Biden handle it. What we need to focus on now as America, we need to come together and rally behind chestnut. And if it, listen, we have two outs here. Okay. If we get Nathan's to allow Joey chestnut back in the competition, we've won. Okay. Now, We've won the war. That's it. That's the goal. Thank you. Have a good day. Everybody go home. If they don't let him back in, our efforts are not lost, okay? We will then just simply convert that energy into the live stream on September 2nd. Because if we can't get Nathan's to agree, then we simply boycott the event, their numbers go down, and the Netflix September numbers go all the way up. And then... Hopefully that'll be like, mm, okay, maybe Nathan's, we made a mistake. Uh, uh, what if, here's an idea, next year, 2025, Nathan's partners with Netflix and the 4th of July hot dog eating competition from Nathan's is brought to you by Netflix and not only streamed what on whatever syndication channel on cable television for the old people to watch, but it will also simultaneously be live on Netflix. Hello, genius idea. I only want 10%. If the protests work and if our movement works and enough people sign the petition, Nathan's will be nothing but forced to also give Joey Chestnut the same deal. Could you imagine? Joey Chestnut's probably going to get the same deal from them. They're probably going to also give him a $1.4 million deal just to promote them all. Promote all the hot dogs, whether they're vegan whether whatever, because let's be honest, the hot dog industry 
probably is, uh, you know, not doing so great. It's probably not doing great. And what it needs to bring it back to life in 2024, 2025 is the ultimate spokesperson, AKA <sighs> daddy dogs, Joey Chestnut, you know? And so, uh, it's, it's just, it's, it's, I love, I love that Netflix has decided to enter themselves into the ring. And so I said it last week, folks, I said it last week and I was absolutely correct because I usually am nine times out of 10 on this podcast. Okay. The week before last, the numbers were down. I said, now we've got daddy trumpets to talk about. We've got Donald Trump news. And what happened? 25 plus subscribers later, 20,000 shorts views later, we've got the numbers back up, babes. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, do it. If you haven't hit the like button, do it. If you haven't hit the bell, do it. I know, I'm telling you what to do. And now you need to go do it. Listen to me right now and do it. Hit the subscribe button and do it. Because we're once again here to talk about zaddy trumpets, okay? And we've got the news. We've got it all. Again, we're kind of a week late on it, but that's okay. That's really okay. Because we've got the clips. We've got the topics. We've got it and we're ready to go. Listen, there's nothing more that Donald Trump loves talking about than the uh, electric vehicle situation that Biden is trying to pass. So the Democrats right now within the current administration have a plan that by 2025 in some states, by 2030, by 2050, whatever the year is, all f you know, federal vehicles, all consumer vehicles, all new vehicles being manufactured must be that of an electric or hybrid vehicle. We're trying to lower emissions. We're trying to get rid of the gas. You know what I mean? It's the future, folks. And what's happening and what we have now discovered is that Donald Trump and his friends like Marjorie Taylor Greene and all the Republicans don't like electric vehicles because it fucks with the bottom line. When you take the barrels of gasoline away and the American people stop buying said gasoline, then the trillions of dollars that we have with our friends in Saudi Arabia and other third world countries goes to zero. If there's no use for that gas in our vehicles and we're all driving electric, you know, based on our plugs and our solar powers, thanks to Elon Musk, well, then Donald Trump and all of his friends lose billions of dollars. So of course we're advocating against the electric vehicles of America. And so, you know, that naturally with Donald Trump's three brain cells translates to the fact that he assumes that all transportation will be electric, including boats, including boats. And honestly, when he heard this, Donald Trump said, I was in the room with him when he, when he realized, had this realization, Hey, wait a minute. What happens when we put the all electric boat in the water and something goes wrong? You know what I mean? And to that, I say, good question. So I said, let me ask you a question. And he said, nobody ever asked this question. And it must be because of MIT, my relationship to MIT. Very smart. He goes, I say, what? First of all, the fact that Donald Trump... <laughs> The fact that Donald Trump has spoken to someone at MIT in his lifetime, maybe visited the campus, maybe knows someone who goes there, maybe knows a few people there. The fact that Donald Trump is at one degree associated with MIT makes him an honorary member of the board, makes him an automatic top ranking graduate of all time. And any degree he wants from MIT, Donald Trump has it in his brain. In his brain, knowing the dean or the fucking person in charge, head honcho at the fucking MIT, uh, he, thinks, he thinks he's just as smart as them because he knows them as a person. And that is the core foundation of Donald Trump. And it's why we love him. What would happen if the boat sank from its weight and you're in the boat and you have this tremendously powerful battery and the battery is now underwater and there's a shark that's approximately 10 yards over there. By the way, a lot of shark attacks lately. Do you notice that? A lot of shark. 
I watched some guys justifying it today. Well, they weren't really that angry. They bit off the young lady's leg because of the fact that they were, they were not hungry, but they misunderstood what, who she was. These people are crazy. He said there's no problem with sharks. So, okay, he rambled a little bit there, so let me kind of bring it back because the whole shark attack bit, we get shark, it's fine. So what Donald Trump is now is now projecting and 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 asking this this professor this very smart person what he is now asking is if i have a boat with a battery on it if i have a tesla boat and my boat gets a hole in it and it starts to sink and as the boat is slowly sinking i look to my left and there's a great white shark just 10 yards in the water circling and he's hungry. He's a hungry shark. I can tell. I looked him in his eyes. I know. I asked, I asked him and he, he nodded. The shark was very hungry. I looked 10 yards to my right and there is the biggest shark I've ever seen. What do I do? What do I do in that situation? Do I stay with this electric boat that will inevitably electrocute me? Or do I attempt to fight the great white shark and become pretty much the greatest president ever? Name one other president. Biden couldn't do that. Biden couldn't get out of bed this morning, let alone fight a great white shark. That's why I'm the best. I'm the best president that there ever was. He just didn't really understand a young woman swimming now who really got decimated and other people to a lot of shark attacks. So I said, so there's a shark 10 yards away from the boat, 10 <laughs> yards or here. Do I get electrocuted? If the boat is sinking, water goes over the battery, the boat is sinking. Do I stay on top of the boat and get electrocuted? Or do I jump over by the shark and not get electrocuted? Because I will tell you, he didn't know the answer. He said, you know, nobody's ever asked me that question. That's I right. said, I think it's a good question. I think there's a lot of electric current coming through that water. But you know what I'd do That's if right. there was a shark or you get electrocuted? I'll take electrocution every single time. I'm not getting near the shark. So we could. Okay, so there you have it. There's your answer. There's your motives. It's what everyone's going to do. Hey, if Donald Trump says, go storm the Capitol, what do you think the American people, if Donald Trump says, don't go towards the shark, get electrocuted instead, that's what everyone behind him is going to do. That's what 99% of America is going to do. And for the 1% left who still kind of thinks that Joe Biden is mentally sound, well, you know, they'll, they'll probably swim towards the shark. Listen, both outcomes are, you know, inevitably uh, deadly, of course. But here's my suggestion. If you know the boat is sinking, uh, one, let's be honest, we can assume that the geniusness of Elon Musk will probably have thought of this whole scenario. At least he has now. He's definitely seen this clip. So basically, Elon Musk is going to make his Tesla boats uh, AKA waterproof, unsinkable, and inevitably shark proof. Cause they'll probably be the same material that they make with the cyber truck. And you can't shoot that with a fucking machine gun, let alone a shark. So let's just be honest with ourselves. Uh, Elon's already on it. And this problem won't probably ever exist. Thanks to, you know, the billions of dollars of that we'll put into the project. And so what I would do honestly in that situation is probably swim towards the shark punch it in the nose, grab onto its fin, and just, you know, kind of ride that bitch back to shore. And then when I get there, everyone's like, oh my God, Levi, what, what was that? I was like, oh, it's a shark. I rode him. They're like, Levi, how'd you get back? A shark. And so like, I got on shore and then I'm like, yeah, my fucking boat sank. Now I gotta go sue Elon Musk. I almost got electrocuted to death. What a nightmare. And meanwhile, while, uh, you know, uh, meanwhile, while Trump is off ranting uh, about about the shark situation, uh, in the same breath, at the same rally, Marjorie Taylor Greene, once it's her time on stage, she gets her five minutes to talk about how the, you know, what the disdain uh, of electric vehicles is like for her. Because if it wasn't for Donald Trump and the rest of the Republicans, we've got to have Marjorie Taylor Greene's opinion. Now, Marjorie Taylor Greene, just so everyone knows before we roll the clip, she might strike out here. She's already on strike two, okay? Strike one was showing pictures of Hunter Biden's penis in the courtroom. There's never been another time in this country when a representative, an employee of the federal government of the United States 
is sitting on a panel of people in a courtroom setting. And when it's her time to speak, she has poster boards of the current president of the United States blurred out penis and lines of cocaine just on display behind her as exhibit A for what she is about to talk about. Hey lady, you're insane. Strike one. And then strike two was her second court appearance last week calling fucking Dr. Fauci, not calling him doctor, calling him mister. Here's the thing. Whether or not it was Fauci's direct fault that COVID happened, whether or not Fauci knew it was going to happen, whether or not Fauci did it on purpose, whether or not he lied to us, whether or not we know Fauci lied to us because of the emails, everything we know about Dr. Fauci has all come to light in the past four years. We all know he's a piece of shit. But at the end of the day, you still, you can't necessarily get rid of that 1% that like you kind of have to call him Dr. Fauci. And so when Marjorie Taylor Greene comes out the gate swinging, <laughs> just saying, I'm not doing it. I'm not calling this motherfucker doctor. He's Mr. Fauci in my time because a doctor would never. And so, hey, lady, strike two, you're crazy. Marjorie Taylor Greene is crazy. And so we potentially have strike three because here she is at the same rally Uh, I believe also ranting about electric vehicles. Let's see how she feels, okay? We've got Trump's boat and shark situation. So Marjorie Taylor Greene hopefully has a little bit more to say. Let's see. And you think gas prices are high now? Just wait until you're forced to drive an electric vehicle. (laughs) Exactly. Um, hold on. This seems like, okay, hold on. You Listen, I, it's me, okay? It's the undiagnosed ADHD, the constant drug use, the energy drinks, the, the prescription drugs that I don't have prescriptions for. It's, it's just, it's the way my brain works. So I, hold on. Let's, so what we're saying. And you think gas prices are high now? Just wait until you're forced to drive an electric vehicle. So. Exactly. Okay. So does Marjorie Taylor Greene think you need gas? to run or maintain or have anything to do with an electric, like don't, I, like didn't Biden like buy the entire government like Tesla's like a year ago? Like how do we not know, how can we be so, um, how can we be so stupid? So for, okay, and so taking what she said and and attempting, again, my brain, to put the pieces of the puzzle together properly, I think what Miss Green was attempting to say here was, if you think gas prices are high now, wait until you get your electric bill with your electric vehicle instead, I think is what she was trying to get across. What she is trying to convince you of is that it is cheaper to put gas in your car than to charge a Tesla. And to that, we say bullshit. Because, listen, not only do we just know, it's common sense, uh, but we've done the research because it's what we do here on the What Are We Doing podcast. And so for those of you who are still kind of like trying to figure it out and might be like, you know, on the side of Trump and Marjorie Taylor Greene, like, yeah, fuck electric vehicles. I'm never doing it. I'm putting that. Like, it's fine, but it's inevitable. So hop on board. Like you, the same people who were screaming about the iPhone. And now guess what? What's in your pocket, babe? Shut up. You'll have a Tesla soon enough. It's fine. Uh, so like, listen, whoa, uh, on average, weekly, now, in this country, modern mid-sedan slash, uh, you know, medium-sized SUV costs anywhere from 40 to $50 to fill up anywhere from 10 to 13 gallons at a time. And doing the math, those gallons equal 40 to $50 a week, some are higher, some are higher. 
You know what I mean? The bigger trucks, the bigger whatever. Some vehicles are more, sometimes a little bit less, but on average in this country, the gas, average gas vehicle pays $40 to $50 a week in gas. And if you're doing the math, babes, that's $200 a month. And so, um, uh, when it comes to now, we didn't do the math on like all the other third parties, like Kia and Mustang and Ford and hybrids and Toyotas and Hondas and all that. We specifically just did the math on Tesla because you know, they're better. And, um, on average, it takes about $7. It takes about seven to $10 a week to charge your Tesla. If you have a long range, it's $10. If you have a base model, which most people do, it's $7 a fucking week. And so uh, that math there comes out to about less than $28. And I think uh, Texas is one of the states, I, I don't think it's launched in many others yet, but I'm pretty sure Elon just announced like um, an $8 a month unlimited charging subscription. So like it, the whole fact that Republicans and even some Democrats and just like the government overall and like the skeptics of the future and where technology is going. If you have ever heard anyone say there's not enough power on the United States electric grid to handle an electric vehicle for every person, that's actually also false. Um, it would actually only take the amount of space uh, that I think the entire state of like Ohio takes up to have enough solar panels to run, I think, the continent. I think not only the United States, but we would only need that many solar panels to run, I think, Mexico and Canada as well. Uh, my math might not math there. It might be a little Terrence Howardy, but I think it's pretty close. And so, um, you know, we've got more farmland than that here in America. And do we need all the corn? No. Is corn a trillion dollar industry? Yeah. So it's going to be hard to get rid of, but... We might need it when everyone has Teslas. So it's just, you know, we've got, we've got, we've got Donald Trump ranting about hot dogs, sharks, electric boats, like hypothetical situations. Marjorie Taylor Greene has no idea what the difference between gas and charging your electric vehicle is, or the difference of, and on the flip side of things, on the flip side of things, we've got President Biden. We've got President Biden, who uh, just attended uh, what am I uh, as to understand as the uh, G7 uh, summit. So um, I'm not entirely sure uh, what what G7 is or why it's important, but apparently it's the world stage and other leaders are there. Um, uh, I think the, uh, prime minister was there of some sort. Hold on. Let me get a name. Um, yeah, I, 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 listen, that's not important. Okay. It doesn't matter who was there. All that matters is that, all that matters is that this is where our president is. This is where he is 24 seven every day. Every day the man leaves the White House, whether he's on a stage, a metaphorical stage, at an event, at the front yard, in the vehicle, wherever, he's always turned around, he doesn't ever seem to know where he is, and it's a daily struggle. And it's, listen, like, what, how, where is he going? Now, here's the full clip. Some people say, you know, the clips are edited, the, the Democrats and Republicans will have you thinking two other things. But from my understanding, when everyone else is watching, this man right here in the middle of the screen uh, parachute in, the rest of the group right here are facing this way. And one single soul is wandering. One single soul is wandering and it's unfortunately it's joe unfortunately it's joe to the point where watch the lady in the suit she's the prime minister of some country uh she looks off to her people her people are in the background the lady in the pink suit right here look at her she sees her people they're they're waving her down they're like go get him go get joe they're holding up a sign like go get joe and she looks over and she's like oh shit 
Joe Biden's wandering off into the fucking universe. And, and so she's got to go get him, wrangle him back in and be like, Hey Joe, look over here. Look, 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 look over here. Look over here. And folks, this is happening every day. This is happening every day. He's smiling off into the trees. Now, of course, there's other parachuters over there. He gave him a thumbs up, but they landed 16 minutes ago. Where's he going? Go get him. Go get him. Hey, oop, Joe. Sweetheart, Joe. Hey, honey, come with me. Right here. Look, Joe, right here. All right. All right. Everyone get around Joe so he can't go anywhere. See how they surround him? Look, they all just surrounded him so he couldn't venture off, and the only way he could go was the way he was supposed to. There's... <laughs> Oh, poor Joe. I mean, it's, man, he's clearly a fragile old man. Here he is, dead in the eyes with the sunglasses, just standing there. Just standing there like a non-playable character. Like, just a, like, like they've replaced him. Like, they've replaced him with a robot. It's, it's... <laughs> They've, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's, I'm at loss for words. I'm at loss for words to the point where here in the next few months, people are going to expect me to go to the polls and they're going to tell me I have to vote and they're going to make me choose between one of these two idiots. And it's like, Hey man, what's going on? What's going on now? If you watch, MSNBC, you would believe that everything is okay. MSNBC would have you and the rest of the country fooled, assuming that, listen, Biden's not the problem, okay? It's that stinky, smelly, fake hair, orange tan, Donald Trump. He's the one with the brain issues, Donald Trump's the one wandering off. Donald Trump's the one ranting at the podium. Donald Trump is the problem. Biden? Biden? You think Biden's the problem? You think there's something wrong with Biden? He couldn't find his chair one time, folks. Biden couldn't find it. Again, it's just like the way we started this show. Trump is literally crazy on stage, and I say it not in a good way. Not well, not fit, not mentally capable of holding together a sentence when his prompter goes down. And yet Biden is constantly covered for being old, but yet travels onto the world stage doing speeches, dinners, important ceremonies, recognizing people who suffered and survived D-Day, right. spending time with them, connecting with them. You see it all on video. Except if you go to these places or you talk to those Republicans, you see the one time where he couldn't find his chair. Well, but, but, but even or that was doctored. a lie. It's disinformation. It's, it's doctor. Listen, how dare you, you piece of shit. You call yourself an American. You call yourself an American citizen. If you ever, more than one time, were like, hey, what the fuck is Biden doing right now? What's he saying? What word did he just say? Where is he going? What's he doing? Did he just shit himself? Where is he going now? He's supposed to be over here. He's wandering over there. He doesn't know what day it is. He can't go. Listen, you're a piece of shit. You're a piece of shit. It happened one time. It happened one time in these last four years. He couldn't find his chair one time. And now the mainstream media and the news and the fucking Republicans and Trump and all of his friends are out here spreading misinformation about the president of the United States. They're spreading lies and propaganda about Joe Biden. He couldn't find his chair one time, folks. One time. What's hilarious about, what's hilarious about this clip is when she's describing Donald Trump, like if you didn't know any better and if you cut off the ends, you would clearly say you would put all your money, all the chips, all the chips on Biden. If you had no idea what the political views of MSNBC or this wretched woman uh, were, and you just had to make a straight face value guess, 
If you heard these words, bet right now. Who do you think she'd be talking about? Ready? Here we go. Is literally crazy on st stage, and I say it not in a good way. Not well. Not fit. Not mentally capable of holding together a sentence when his prompter goes down. And yet is constantly covered for being old, but yet travels onto the world stage doing speeches, dinners, important ceremonies, yeah. recognizing. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because if, listen, I'm showing everybody. Show everybody. Share this clip. Show your friends. Test them. Quiz them. Quiz the people. And then whenever they're like, oh, clearly, what is it, Biden? She's talking about Biden. Hey, oh, give me all your money because I won that bet bet. Like, come on, dude. What are we doing? Hey, I haven't said in a few weeks, what are we doing? Ah. And, and you know, we can't, we can't, we can't get any more. We can't get any more out of Biden other than what he has to give us at the podium. She knew, lost, she knew so long as she was denied, our freedom can never be secured. And the best part about Donald Trump in the whole situation is uh, he's out here at rallies. He's out here doing interviews. He's out here doing podcast episodes, answering the questions that America wants to hear the most. OK, because if it's not bad enough that the president is now sitting down with Logan Paul and Mike Malak, an ex heroin addict, <laughs> I'm not saying, listen, hey, I'm not knocking you. I'm not judging. I've got plenty of ex drug addicts in my life. We love them. Good for you. You overcame it. It was your darkest moment and you're a better person because of it. But Donald Trump could probably run a scroll of a list of a handful of people that he should more appropriately be sitting down with than Logan Paul and Mike Malak on the impulsive podcast. You know what I mean? Like, Hey, honestly, how much shit do you think is in George Janko's pants right now? George Janko probably shit his pants at the fact that he's missing out. George Janko could have sat down with Donald Trump. I guarantee watch George Janko gets Biden. I guarantee it. Watch George Janko's podcast, get Biden. And so, like I said, we have to know, we have to know, and you would have to assume that a man like Logan Paul, a man for the people, world champion wrestler, uh, boxer, uh, YouTuber, celebrity, like Logan Paul, Prime, hey, Prime, the energy drink, you've drank it, I know you have, you dirty little smut, you love that shit, because he made $1.2 billion last year. Freaking Logan Paul is itching for that billion dollar buyout from Gatorade or Pepsi. Well, Pepsi, I think Pepsi owns Gatorade. He is waiting for the call. As soon as Logan Paul sees the caller ID PepsiCo come across his phone, he's going to then equally shit his pants at the same fact of George Janko knowing he missed out on the Donald Trump interview. And so we're all asking the same questions. We all want to know. We all need to know what the answers are. And so we've, we, that's what we did. Logan Paul asked all of the hard hitting questions. And this is what Donald Trump had to say. I want to talk to you about aliens, yeah. UFOs, UAPs, I know. the disclosure we've seen in Congress yeah. recently. It's, it's, it's confusing and upsetting <laughs> a lot of Americans because something's going, there's something happening. There are unidentified aerial phenomena in the sky. We don't know what they are. Do you? So it's such a, a, a question I do get a lot, and it's such an interesting question. I've met with pilots that look just like you, actually. Okay, <laughs> they have more of a crew cut, okay? They, they look like him, and they look like you. Some of them look like you. <laughs> a little fatter. <laughs> but the, these are perfect people, okay. and they're not, not you crazy. know, conspiracy. What's the point? Like, what, what, where does he... God, he's a podcaster, man. He, Donald Trump, I've said it so many times. I don't think anyone else actually said this or has, has this had this take. Donald Trump is more of a stand-up comedian, podcaster, influencer, like the fucking rest of us, than he is a goddamn politician. Like, yeah, I get it. He's obsessed and he loves it and he wants to be president for the rest of his life. And if he gets back into office this year and the next, 
you know what I mean? He might, he's going to attempt to pass some legislation to the point where they're not going to be able to get him the fuck out. Like we thought he wasn't going to go in, 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 in 2020. We thought they were going to have to pry his ass out of that goddamn white house. But Hey, we'll see how it goes. But all I'm saying is the man at his core is a comedian. And so when we're asking the questions like, you know, how are you going to help? Not, not the questions like, how are you going to lower taxes? How are you going to help the American people? How are you going to do this? How are you going to fulfill all these promises? Tell me about the aliens. <laughs> As, and in pure Donald Trump fashion, we can't just get to the answer. We can't just get to the answer. We need a whole introductory paragraph before we even start talking about the question that was asked. You know, I've, I've met a lot of pilots. They look like you and you. A lot of pilots, they look just like you. Handsome pilots, perfect people, non-conspiratory people. They look just like you. You're, I mean, you're handsomer. You two are handsomer than these pilots I've talked to. But just so you know, because they look like you, these are trustworthy guys. And it's like, what the fuck? What the fuck? I would want nothing more. I swear to God, if I ever have the opportunity to have Shane Gillis, let alone Donald Trump on this fucking platform, and I know it'll never happen in my lifetime, but if the 1% were to, you know, one day come true, um, I would take, if that comment was made, if Donald Trump starts spouting off about like, oh, I've talked to plenty of business owners, handsome, tall, very good looking, very successful business owners, just like you, just like you, that would live, I would post that clip every day of my life. It's, it's <laughs> So the question remains, does Donald Trump, A, have the answers and access to the aliens, or B, uh, is it all a hoax? And um, let's find out, because I think it's very important. I think it's important for us to know. I think it's important for us to take a break. I think it's important for us as Americans to forget about the fact that we're overpaying in taxes, our bills are high, they're overdue, uh, we're living with our parents, we don't have money to eat. Uh, it's cheaper to get a sub from Subway now for dinner than it is going to the grocery store. Uh, even though Subway subs footlongs are like $13 now and like six inches or $5. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Subway, kill yourself. If that's going to be the case, either fix it or kill yourself because a foot long churro and a foot long chocolate chip cookie isn't going to save the business. No matter how many people have purchased them. And so like, it's just this weird thing. And so I feel like to take some of the stress off, to take some of the anxiety away, to better help you breathe. Okay. Let's take a deep breath. I'm teaching my five-year-old autistic son about deep breaths right now. Every time we get frustrated, every time we get a little overwhelmed, we go. Okay. And then we count down from 10 and guess what? That usually puts us on the right path. So to better help that, we'll take a deep breath. And now we'll fully grasp Donald Trump's understanding of the aliens and finally get the answers we've been looking for as American citizens ever since, you know, what, ever since Joe Rogan had on, you know, the first UFO guy on his podcast 20 years ago. And we're going to get to Rogan in a minute, trust me, because he's freaking off the wall too. But where we go from here is, uh, it just, uh, Logan Paul's changing history. If it wasn't for this interview, History's changed forever. Here's what Donald Trump has to say about aliens. They're yeah. right. not crazy. Yeah. And they tell me stories that they've seen things that you wouldn't believe. These are not people that you would say, There's gee, no oh, that's no okay. Way. President of the United States. Mike's but phone goes off. Who what a fucking that's asshole. Kick him off. Get him out. Replace him with George Jenko. <laughs> uh, so I met with pilots like beautiful Tom Cruise, but taller. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Handsome. Did you just describe people. him again? He just described him again. The people Donald Trump talked to about the aliens went from looking exactly like Jake Paul and Mike Malak to Tom Cruise. He went from Logan Paul to Tom Cruise in the matter of 30 seconds. I clip it. Clip it and post it every day. Donald Trump just said I look exactly like Tom Cruise. And I mean, hey, at fucking 95 years old, I wish I looked like Tom Cruise too. Sir, there was something there that was... Round in form and going like four times faster than my super jet fighter plane. 
And I look at these guys, and they really mean it. Yeah. And <laughs> am I a believer? No, I probably, I, I can't say I am. But I have met with people that are serious people that mm. say there's some really strange things that they see flying around out there. And, you know, if you go to Nevada and you look at that little section of, of uh, where, where they go to look at uh, the aliens where they think all the aliens are landing. That, you know, it's one of, I think it's a, maybe the number one tourist attraction in the United Ros States. Roswell? Yeah. Yeah. Roswell. Area 51? It's, I think it's the number one. It's, it's the lines of people waiting. It, you have no idea how many times I'm asked so, that question. But don't you have access to that information? I have access, but, and I, I speak to people about mm -hmm. it. I've had actually meetings on it. And they will tell you there's something going on. When they say things Things are going four times faster than my beautiful <laughs> top-of-the-line airplane that goes, you know, Mach real fast. With no identifiable propulsion Mach system. Two, yeah. right? These things are creating their own gravity fields, allegedly. Well, they, they have, they have uh, people that are very smart and very solid have said God. they believe God. there is something out there. And, you know, it makes sense that there could be. I've never been convinced even... God, by the way, by the way, could you not listen? Could you not listen to this man speak? I mean, it is the 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 pure fact of once you get past the idea and the the facade that he has up 24/7 and once you get past that and you realize that 99.9% .9 of the shit that is coming out of his mouth is in fact literal shit and it's just spewing and fucking smelling all over the goddamn floor. It is one of the most hilarious things on the planet. It's one of the most hilarious things that we have today. Today, it's why this podcast exists. It's why I'm so glad I've, I, I know nothing about policies and foreign government and politics. And I only read the headlines. And I only know the fact that when I listen to this, I could A, fall asleep, and B, know for a fact that he means nothing, he knows nothing, he has nothing, or he could potentially have the fucking keys to the universe. And that's done, and that's the power. That's the magic, that's the illusion, that's the influence, that's the JoJo Siwa stamp of approval for Donald Trump. Despite that, you know, mm -hmm. I just, for some reason it's not my thing. But a lot of people believe that it's true. A lot of very good, solid people believe it's true. Hmm. What and you? I know there are illegal aliens out there, but those are the ones that come through the border. Come on, we have plenty of them. <laughs> those are the ones I know. When you say aliens, I say, are they illegal aliens? These are these, these might be Stop. illegal, but we don't want to test them. Yeah, because if they can go four times faster, we're not going to test them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's an interesting question. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Is there a chance that one of these orgs is potentially hiding Ooh. information from you about aliens? Um, I guess so. Good it's, question. Uh, you have the deep state, mm. and you do have a deep state, and certainly they could. But I don't think on this subject. I was interested in it because I've been asked so many times, and I, I talked to people that have said that they. I would have turned it off know, by now, but his voice sighting. is so mesmerizing. And it's uh, very believable. It's it's very possible that there is something. And why <sighs> wouldn't there be? You know, you take a look at the universe and you see. All, right. all of the different planets, and you see this, you know, look, here we are on <laughs> one relatively small planet. Logan. Why wouldn't God you damn it, Logan. On, on a planet that's, you know, 400 <sighs> Logan, times Logan, the Logan, size. Logan, 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 some, Logan, Logan, Logan. Something. Something. Yeah. something. Logan Paul, Logan Paul, just sitting there shaking his head. And, 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 and uh, so listen, he didn't give us a clear answer. So Donald Trump, I don't think, personally believes in aliens but he believes the smart and attractive and higher power up people within the government. He also just confirmed there's a deep state. Uh, Mike's question, by the way, do you believe that there are entities within the federal government that are hiding information from Donald Trump? And that is a fascinating rabbit hole that I would love to go down. Could you imagine, like, Imagine that for a second. That's not something a lot of people think about. Depending on who's president, like if the head of the CIA is a is a is a you know Obama fan, is a diehard Democrat, 
voted for Obama every time, would suck his dick if he had the opportunity to. And then in comes Donald Trump demanding he gives them all the answers. I want to know about Area 51. Show me the aliens. What's going on? Why would the guy who's the number one Obama fan, head of the CIA, I'm not saying he is, but just hypothetically speaking, why would he tell him anything? Why would you not front face lie? Because you know someone like Donald Trump's just going to go on a podcast with Logan Paul and blab out everything you just told him. So why not feed him exactly what you want to hear? It's a very interesting situation. It's a very interesting topic. And for now, uh, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the roadmap, and that's where Donald Trump has landed um, basically uh, uh, this week. And so we, we went from uh, sharks and electric boats in Vegas uh, last Friday to now the Impulsive Podcast, uh, you know, from where at once which we came from filming dead bodies in a forest in Japan to, uh, you know, world star WWE, you know, world championship prime co-owner, $1.2 billion company, let alone the YouTube empire and the merch and the money and the events and the crypto scams and how much money he still has left over from all the suckers who gave him crypto zoo money. And just, it's insane the way, uh, the way that the world works. It really is. So Chris Brown is on tour, moving along through the entertainment industry. Chris Brown is on tour. Okay. Uh, listen, um, I know a lot of people. I know a few people who still listen. He's got new albums out. He's got new music. I don't think I've listened to a Chris Brown track in years. I haven't, I haven't listened to any new albums for him, any new music. Maybe if it pops up every once in a while, but I am not a died hard, uh, Chris Brown fan kind of fell off after the slap. Unfortunately, some slaps can be forgiven Will Smith, but when you hit Rihanna, that <clears throat> holds a place in my heart. So you know, whatever, take that for what it is. Uh, but either way, um, you know, we're on tour. It's new music. It's 2024, baby. Why not go on tour for the summer? It's Chris Brown and we've got new music. And what's hilarious is that every artist thinks that when we need to, uh, when we're thinking about how do we amplify, how do we make this our version of the Eras tour? Okay, how do we make this an unforgettable experience? And nine times out of 10, most people, most people will recommend, hey, you know what we could do? We could put you on a harness, okay? And we could have you float in from the back of the crowd all the way to the front. You can like, you can dance. Like Michael Jackson, we made him float. 50 Cent was floating on his tour. Chris Brown said, I wanna float. So they attach the wires to the harness, they put them on him. And, you know, he's flying, he's flying through the audience down to the stage until a motherfucker gets stuck. How embarrassing when you get stuck on the harness that's supposed to create this moment. Oh my God, it's Chris Brown. Here he comes. He's coming down from the heavens. I always knew he was Jesus. And then he just gets stuck. <laughs> yeah, he gets stuck. And it's, uh, you know, he's still got to do the ad-libs. The show's still going. The DJ's not stopping the music, so the show must go on until the technical difficulty uh, is, um, you know, fixed or they get him down or whatever. however the situation mends itself. I'm sure he got down right after that. But just a fun, embarrassing moment for Mr. Brown as we start the bit. You know what I mean? But for those who are diehard fans of Chris, okay? And I'm not talking about the ones who, you know, download the music, listen to every song, know everything about him, standing front row. I don't consider you a diehard Chris Brown fan until you've not only spent the money it takes to get to the concert, the concert ticket, the hotel, the outfit, the bottles, whatever else you're taking, the car, your friends. And on top of all that, the $1,111 meet and greet pass. Because if you're a bad bitch and you are the number one Chris Brown fan, you better prove it. 
you better prove it because posting 30 Snapchats from your seat seven rows back from the stage, not enough anymore. Not enough. I got 19 friends sending me the entire Chris Brown concert every day. You're not special, but I've got no one, not a single soul, sending me pictures of them with Chris Brown. So now these people are automatically a step above the rest. Everyone else in the audience, peasants. The meet and greets, well, <laughs> they run the show. And so for a grand whopping total of $1,100, you can purchase a meet and greet ticket. And of course, we have. And of course, you know, as I'm sure Chris Brown uh, assumed and has experienced in the past, uh, the ladies showed up. And boy, oh boy, what better? What, what are you going to do? I swear to God, if you're a lady, I mean, look at this. If you're a lady and you're spending upwards more than a thousand plus dollars to meet Chris Brown for a whopping total of nine seconds just to snap a picture and move the fuck on, then you better make it worth it. So, of course, you got to get your ass grabbed. You got to throw that leg up. Make Chris Brown remember you. And, of course, your best assets. And it's just utterly fantastic that these women... These are probably, honestly, some of the same people, the same people that are complaining at the Trump rallies about Biden's administration and economy and inflation, and we can't afford groceries, but we're dropping a whole stack on a meet and greet with Chris Brown. And look at this. Look at <laughs> this chick. You didn't see this at first. Let's zoom in. Let's zoom in. First of all, sure just got a fatty. I would have grabbed it too. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. You have to. If they give you the opportunity, you gotta grab it. She's got a shirt with him on it and her giving him ass at the last meet and greet. This isn't her first time. We've now spent $2,000 to spend upwards of 18 seconds now with Chris Brown. And I mean, if we're being honest, other oh, shorty's fine. Oh, shit. She's fine too. I would have gotten her number. Damn. You think he gets any of the, He's got to get their numbers. He's got to get her numbers. If Chris Brown meets this woman and he looks at her left hand, let me look at that hand. She got a ring on it? Ooh, that's tricky. Wait, is that the right? No, that's not her left hand. Damn it. Her left hand's not in the picture. I doubt it. I doubt, I doubt that this fine of a woman would A, let Chris Brown grab her ass, B, pay $1,000 for him to do so, and C, keep and post the photo as a memoir forever as your profile picture for the next year and a half if she had a man. Now, if this was Meg's, fuck it. I mean, whatever. Make Chris Brown your fucking, I don't care. I'm not insecure. But I would imagine if you've, you know, whoever is potentially possibly dating this woman might be a little upset, which would lead me to believe she's probably single. And I mean, hey, I don't blame it. Crit, the tattoos, the outfit, the fucking curves. Damn, smile. Look at his face. Look at Chris Brown's face. He knows. Chris Brown knows here. Chris Brown knows exactly what he has his hands on in this picture. Now, does he know it in the other ones? Yay, he's playing. Look at him here. Look at him here. Look at how happy. Look at how instantly happy and just ready to go he is in this picture. And then just a mere few meet and greet passes later, we're right here. Now, listen, I'm not knocking any of them. I'm not knocking any of these women, but I just find it utterly hilarious. Ladies, get your ass grabbed. That's all I'm saying. If you've, listen, if you've got an extra thousand dollars in the bank and you did the math and you know your bills are paid because your baby daddy supports you and he's sending you the money anyways and you told him the money was for the baby, but you ended up at the meet and greet pass with Chris Brown anyways, get your ass Grabbed. I love it. Good for you. Literally after my picture went viral, my boyfriend broke up with me about a week later after arguing because he felt like Chris was too close on me. I'm just like, it's one of the most respectable pictures. It's not <laughs> like I was bending over grabbing my ankles. Um, but I I would trade my ex for me and Chris Brown a hundred more times. Now here's the issue. 
on the other side of the coin, there's men. There's men. There's men. And so I wouldn't have thought this, but um, there's men. There are grown 20 plus, maybe even 30 plus year old men who are paying $1,000 plus to meet Chris Brown. Now, as a man, okay, I didn't quite understand it. So I asked my friends, okay, I asked my two very close friends who are in fact within and come from uh, most likely, if not closely related to the same culture as Chris Brown, if you dig what I'm putting down. I asked my black friends. I asked my black friends if they would pay a thousand plus dollars to see Chris Brown. And instantaneously, they both texted me back and said, no fucking way. And so to that, I have concluded that this shit right here, it's just gay, bro. It's a little gay. It, maybe not in the full sense of the word, but in 2024, as a man, if you have an extra thousand dollars, you couldn't think of anything. Go ahead. Anything in the comments down below. Anything. Saving, stop, shopping spree, your shorty, your kid, a fancy dinner, a date, three PS5s, whatever you want with a thousand dollars. I know a thousand dollars doesn't go that far in 2024, but it, you're a full grown human male adult with a penis swinging between your legs and you show up with a thousand dollar ticket to a Chris Brown meet and greet and you do this shit. I got one word for you, dude. Gay. You know, like, what are we, where are we at? Where are we at with, you know, how we're spending our money in America? We thought, <laughs> we thought prices were too damn high. Now, here's the thing. Here's what we can, here's, <laughs> it's just, it's just the math. It's the math. The math is what gets me, okay? It's what gets me. It's, it's what gets me. The shit's wild. The shit's wild. So while people are out here stuck between deciding whether they're going to eat groceries for the week or give nine seconds of their lives to Chris Brown, oh man, it's, it's just something I don't understand. So let's do the math, right? Now, besides the obvious, you know what I mean? Besides the obvious that because of this news, I will be now hosting meet and greets in this studio. There's going to be a website. You can sign up. And for $2,000, you can come here, take a picture with me, say hi, what's up? I'll dap you up. We'll do whatever for nine seconds. And then you get the fuck out. I'm selling those tickets. They're $2,000 a piece. Okay. Now, listen, I might not have as much influence as Chris Brown. Okay. But like, I got dance moves. You saw it. I got the dance moves. Check them out. You know? And I'll grab your ass. I'll grab your ass. Megs will give me permission to do it. And hey, you want a little extra? Megs will be up here with me. She'll grab your ass too. She'll smack it on the way out. I'll grab your ass for the photo and Megs will smack it on the way out. You don't get that with Chris Brown meet and greet passes, okay? So for only, you know, $2,000, you can come here, meet me. I'll grab your ass. If you're a dude, we'll touch tips and bam. You got a picture with the number one podcaster in Mechanicsburg, PA. And if that's not worth two grand, I don't know what is in this country. Listen, they're sold out. The meet and greet passes are sold out. For $1,000, $1,100, they're sold out. There's 36 tour dates on uh, the stop, and each one's sold out. 36 sold out VIP meet and greet passes. We don't have an exact number. It could probably range anywhere from 50 to 100 passes, so we split the difference, and we said 75 when working on our math. And if you take 75 meet and greet passes times each one of the tour dates, 75 times 36, what's the math, Terrence Howard? I know you know. Go ahead. Comment below. I know you're watching. And then you take that number multiplied by $1,111, you get just under $3 million dollars. On top of the bag that Chris Brown secures every night at each venue he goes to, 
times 36. On top of that, on top of the streaming that happens because of the show, on top of the revenue that comes with the deals and the brands and everything else in Chris Brown's ecosystem, he is getting paid no less, maybe a little bit less than $3 million to grab some ass. And if that's not the American dream, I don't know what it, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Levi McCurdy. This has been another episode of the, what do we do in podcast? Thank you guys so much for rocking with me for an hour plus this week. It's great to be back in action with Zaddy Trumpets and all of the news surrounding the world. And I'll ask it once again, before we signed off, Hey guys, what are we doing? I'll see you guys next week. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, follow our friends, do what you got to do in the links, leave a comment, leave a like, support us on other social media, and uh, we'll see you next time, babes. Next Friday, episode 146 is coming right at you. I can't wait because we'll probably have more Donald Trump news and the numbers will keep going up. Shout out to all 1,625 of our subscribers and all of you who made it possible for our Taylor Swift AI uh, song clip that we posted like three months ago, still doing dummy numbers on Facebook Reels. Don't know why, but it's happened and we love it. Shout out to you guys. Peace out, everybody. Have a great week.